Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, I am some guy and welcome to Overanalyzed Adventures. What I have for you today is a rather interesting title. An edutainment game, a Danish made edutainment game that won some awards, or at least I think it won an award. I'm not entirely sure, it's got this certificate I've found. I don't know what it means, it's all in Danish and I don't speak it. But nevertheless, this is an edutainment game about the plague, the Black Death, the disease that wiped out a good chunk of Europe in the medieval era. Well, not just Europe, but the focus of this game's on the European part of the Black Death, but never mind that. This is an edutainment game about the plague. So let's start it up and take a look at it, shall we? That's not audio shenanigans on my part, folks. That is the actual theme song for this game. This up be happy-go-lucky tune for a game about the Black Death. Oh dear me, I think I need a beer. But it's not like the title screen's much of an improvement over the music. Good lord, what the hell is going on with this game? Based on what I've seen and heard so far, I'm not taking this developer's name seriously. Oh hey, I think it's the people that gave this game an award and it got like 40,000 euros. I don't know, it's all in Danish and I just use Google Translate. Yeah, a, a body just fell from the sky. I really do need that beer now. Oh god, I'll be right back. Ugh. This is gonna be a 40 ounces of adventure slash overanalyzed adventure video. What mess have I gotten myself into? Wow, game, you really should have used this as the title screen music because it seems a little bit more appropriate for a game about, you know, a pandemic. But yeah, what the hell is that noise in the background? It sounds like static or something. Game? Come on, you could have used noise removal. It's free in audacity. Anywho, the protagonist in this game is this little boy. His mama's sick with some mysterious disease, and his dad's a barber. There, I cut through all the introduction. Now we go to our first quest, and that's this bull. I don't know what to do, but I'll need to close the shop. Take this sign, go outside, and put it on the door. Clearly our daddy's legs appear to be broken or he's possessed by some witchcraft. After all, those pages fall into the exact same place every single time. Oh my god, the animation is so cheap in this game. Hell, but at least the beer I'm drinking's not. Click on the bag. Take the QSO sign and click on the door to put the sign on it. How appropriate that they have a mouse, which was one of the carriers of the plague, be your friendly animal companion. Oh boy, hopefully all those fleas on him don't infect our little protagonist. And yeah, I know what you're thinking. That barber's pole seems a bit modern for this game. But actually, the barber's pole does date back to the medieval era because a lot of barbers were also surgeons, and that's kind of like the symbol for bloodletting. But really, it seems a bit inappropriate that a guy chugging a beer has to educate you on what's in an edutainment title. You think the edutainment title would be capable of doing that itself. Instead, it says this. Ah, it's comedy gold! A stitch in time saves nine. Also, I think the protagonist's daddy has lead poisoning or something like that because he likes to speak in riddles before and after every conversation. A job well done is time well spent. Now, I can go upstairs and try to treat your mother's disease. I need you to go out and seek knowledge about the disease so we can help her in the best possible way. Come back when you've learned something about the disease. Here's a florin for your good work so far. Knowledge is power. So this is where the edutainment comes into the game. We're here to learn about the Black Death. Oh boy. Wait, we get outside and then we get our game ranking for up till now. I got a rank of wood. I'm a peasant. Figure I would have been a peasant back in the medieval era because, well, unless you're the 1%, you were a peasant. So, yay. Hello, friend. So this guy looks like he got lost on his way to the Grim Fandango auditions. My name is Mario. I work as a bagamotto. My job is to carry the dead bodies away. Alright folks, did you learn something? Did you learn the Italian word for a guy who carts away bodies? Oh well, that's all we need to know about this Mario guy until he dies from plague. What? I don't think there's any need for a spoiler warning. The dude's handling plague-ridden corpses. What do you think's going to happen to him? Health is better than wealth. Yeah, well, I'd rather have both. What's up, my boy? Thank God. What can you tell me about the disease? 
So we tell the daddy what's up with the disease. He's blindsided like everyone else was in medieval Europe, I guess. He don't know nothing. And now we tell him what we know from a guy who's just outside. Is our daddy too lazy to just go talk to? <sighs> what a lazy guy. Someone at the door. Please answer the front door, Margie. So the father of the house won't answer the damn door. But on the plus side, hey, our mamba doesn't seem like she has the plague. So gay woman I never met for protagonist I barely know. So yeah, there's just a dude right here in the middle of the friggin' house. You know, he just walked right in, apparently don't care about no private property. He's just going in here bold as brass. And we gotta talk to him. This weirdo who just barged into our house. Right. Hello, kid. Is the barber surgeon here? You see, my mistress is ill. We have tried vinegar baths to relieve the pain. Alas, to no avail. Uh, yeah, to no avail does your mouth movements link up with the sound that's still coming out of your mouth. Now we want to try bloodletting through leech therapy. We were hoping your father could do it. So, you think it'd be a simple matter of just talking to our daddy and getting him to come downstairs, but oh hell no. Because we are child protagonists, that means every adult is friggin' worthless, especially parents. So we gotta go downstairs and convince this dude that we somehow a barber surgeon with the knowledge we learned, so there's the edutainment part there, even though it's antiquated medieval medical knowledge that we're regurgitating, you think you want to teach your kids about something more modern. Let me be the judge of that. It sounds almost too good to be true. Will you let me test your knowledge? How many humors does the body hold? Amazing. Do you know why draining blood cures diseases? Truly you know your medicine. Amazing. I'll take you to my mistress. People were easily impressed in medieval era, apparently. So let's meet this damn mistress. I'm glad to meet you. Oh, hell no, we ain't glad to meet you. You got bubble plague, man. As a childless woman, I always welcome children in my chambers. And she also welcomes having her audio not sync up to her lip movements because that's a common problem in this game. It's probably because it comes in six different languages, but still, I'm going nitpick. But what's also going nitpick is the goddamn leech mini game we're going to play. Yeah, that's what we do on this one. We put leeches on her plague sores. Are you learning? Try to put the wriggly, slimy leeches onto the boobos. Boobos? What the hell are you talking about, mouse? You're making no goddamn sense. Nor does these disgusting sounds they're playing. What you trying to do, game? Become an alien game? Thank you. Let's pray that the treatment will help, Mrs. Donna. As a sign of gratitude, I'll give you a ring. It grants access to the entire city. Yay, the game's really highlighting the importance of items we don't even know we need yet. Yay, you're so well designed, game. Now where did I put it? Dio mio, it's gone. But how? Ah, the beggar who bumped into me near your house must have stolen it. So in the industry, that's what we call signposting. It's a really obvious suggestion to look for a beggar because we know we need the key to get more access to the city. Wow, it's like I'm an edutainment game now. Oh, wait, we didn't steal anything. Wow, did the people who make this game watch The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings recently? Because you're kind of ripping it off. Maybe we have. You know, you can have it if you win at riddles. So we gotta solve some riddles for Bobo Biggins over here, and sure enough, I do it because I'm not a dumbass. This game was made for ten-year-olds. Not wait. You're right on this one, too. We lost again, even though we cheated. Here's your precious ring. Yay, we now got a ring that runs us in place to places we didn't even know we needed to get to. Oh, and the plague carrying mouse introduces us to a new mechanic. We need to keep our health in a green zone or else we'll die. Yeah, I wasn't kidding about the right and place thing. We can do that forever. Anyway, we gotta make our way to some crazy dude, but lo and behold, there's a puzzle that blocks our way. But yeah, it's not particularly hard to solve it. We just got a kick of chicken and then, well, follow the directions. 
Oh, damn, the dude's got paper. Oh, my God, I've been jonesing for paper. I've been really needing to play tic-tac-toe for so long. So, yeah, I guess we're supposed to be impressed because he's a dude and he's on the monster and he's got paper. Oh, what? Uh, hello? Is that you again, little mouse man? So, not only has plague been going around, but so has a pandemic of people eating lead paint and being stupid. Hmm, interesting. Magni marvelous, I'd say. What can I do for you, ma ma marzipane? Oh, I, I don't come close to those infected with the plague, since I just might catch it myself, so I can't help you directly. But since the plague comes from the foul air, it might work to purge the air by burning aromatic herbs like dried rosemary. So we have now received our third quest, and that's get Rosemary. But, like any child of the 21st century, I understand that Rosemary is no cure for the plague. Only antibiotics and, you know, sanitation are. So, we gotta get money for a cure we know that won't work. So we're gonna get this money from, oh, that dude who works for the rich lady. We're gonna get a bag full of Florentines, and then... Buy some rosemary. Bada bing, a bada boom. Wow, why did I say that? I must have been drinking. Here's the deal. If you swear that you'll use the money I give you to buy a cure for Mrs. Donna, you can have a pouch full of Florence. Every man has his price. When you've purchased the cure, come by and you'll be rewarded. Oh damn, I'm bad about telling you what's happened in the game because it's kind of terrible. But anyway, we got some, like, glasses that allow us to see stuff that's anarchistic. But it doesn't matter because we're going to meet Schwarzenegger, the sadomasochist. I'm not shitting you folks. Oh my god, this game. Have you paid your penance to the Lord today? I do believe there is a German translation available for this game, so... Hermann Schwarzer at your service. I walk to the brethren of the cross. Our brotherhood has seen the light. Only through suffering will you be spared by God. That's why we flog ourselves with whips. Beware of the sinners. <laughs> Come on, what the? Oh my God, folks, Schwarzenegger, the. Beware of the sinners. <laughs> Oh, that accent. It's just... I should stop talking. Penance and pain is the only way. Those who are against the brethren of the cross will be swept aside. Okay, okay. <laughs> On a more... S <laughs> All right. On a more serious note, how is an iPod having 2000 born child gonna understand any of this or contextualize any of this all they're going to think is that Schwarzenegger's taken to whipping himself <laughs> oh, I can't even save the straight face we will find the sinners and punish them before the eyes of God do you little sinner challenge my knowledge of the holy church our mighty leader, Master Lucian, has taught me all I need to know about God and the Testaments. Pope Smoke, do you even know where he lives, little sinner? Are you ready to test your knowledge against mine? Okay, I asked you where the Pope lives in this, the blessed year of 1348. All right, I've collected myself now. His accent's no longer very funny. To me. Okay, it's still funny to me. All right, okay, again, because I'm not a moron 10-year-old, I, I can answer these questions rather easily. And also, well, I'm, I'm kind of almost drunk now. Oh, boy, it's going to be kind of hard to edit this. But yeah. The point remains, there's kind of an ebb and flow to this game. You reach a point where you're kind of quizzed, like, say, oh, a school test on historical knowledge. So if you know a thing or two about history, it's a breeze. And if you don't, well, you're going to have to study now or else you get a D. This is an edutainment title, after all, so there is some sort of, I guess, school learning to be had here. I bow my head. It seems you know as much as me about the Holy Church. Here, 
take my mini dip and use it to pay mini penance. <laughs> I can't, I can't say anything. <laughs> Here, take my mini dip and use it to pay mini penance. I'm not joking, folks. This is probably one of the funniest games I've ever played. Oh my, we got a whip. To pay many penance for our sins there in the plague. <laughs> okay, I am. All right. I got. I, got, I don't have this help. Free dog, this a priest. I'm Father Sebastian, a French monk from the holy city of Avignon. I was going to learn from Father Tarantino, but now he's gone. Another victim of the plague. I guess I could make a joke about how, oh. You know, God didn't love him enough or something. Or I could just, you know, pound some more beer down my pie hole. I made a decision. Why do you seek God? In the beginning, everybody turned to the church. But they still died. Even the priests died. They think God doesn't love them anymore. Actually, from an edutainment perspective, that's kind of provocative. I could easily see right-wing people in America getting all up in arms about that. Oh God, you're telling me that God doesn't love me enough to protect me from the plague? Heresy! Many are turning to blasphemous rituals and groups, <laughs> such as the fanatic flagellant who claim to work out miracles. All right, let me cut to the chase. This priest is useless right now. All we need to remember is that this fella speaks French based off of the <laughs> That's my beautiful French accent there. All right, I'll say one thing as you're enjoying me saving the game here, and that's that my frame rate dropped to, I'm not kidding you, two while saving the game. It has not been optimized very well, and there's a lot of technical issues with this game that I'll get into later. Have you purchased the cure? Excellent. You're a little miracle waiting to happen. Yeah, sorry about skipping over the text there, but I kind of ran out of patience. It's pretty damn obvious that Rosemary ain't gonna work. And also to find the flint and steel to set fire to the rosemary requires a little bit of pixel hunting. And again, this is an edutainment game for ages 10 to 13. I doubt they have the patience of a seasoned adventure gamer to look for items hidden in the background. Oh yeah, I totally forgot. You get rat poison to kill rats, plague rats in this game, but you don't share this knowledge with anyone else because you're a selfish brat. Same thing with your chronal goggles or whatever the hell they're called. It allows you to see people who have, for some reason, bent the fabric in time and space and exist in periods that they shouldn't like this plague doctor who's from like 300 years in the future and you talk to him and then you give him some items and he goes back in time how this fixes anything or really does anything is beyond me but is it educational is the question i don't really think so and this game bear in mind won some awards it really it's an award-winning edutainment game and i'm chugging beer to it <coughs> Mario doesn't feel so well. I think I've caught the plague from handling all those dead bodies. As I spoiled earlier in the video, Mario has plague. Oh no. But we need a bag of Florentines from him to buy some more stuff to progress in the game. And that means oh, we gotta play a mini game. A very tasteful mini game. Oh boy, let me just fade to it right now. I feel worse than my stomach after a family dinner. Will you help me get some of these pies into the graves? Time to make a corpse lasagna. I, I feel vindicated at this point in the video with my heavy drinking because we're making a corpse lasagna in a Tetris knockoff. Um, where's the educational value in this? Now, there was a quote I remember about the plague that described the bodies being layered on top of each other, like you would layer ingredients on top of the lasagna, but I'm pretty sure they didn't have a Tetris minigame back then to emphasize this point. I mean, what the hell are kids learning that people had Tetris? They didn't have Tetris back in the 1300s. Stupid edutainment game, making me poison myself. <coughs> oh, I went down the wrong.
So here's a weird thing that randomly pops up thanks to the chrono goggles. We got access to antibiotics and no, we're not sharing this with anybody else. Oh yeah, we also have access to a microscope that's only revealed upon using the chrono goggles because I guess we don't have the gift of sight without them. And yeah, we find out that, oh my god, the plague's a disease caused by some bacteria and all that, and antibiotics will clear it up. You know, the same antibiotics we have in our back pocket that we're not going to share with anyone else because we're an asshole. The rosemary was stolen, you say? What's to do now? I must go downstairs to think. Meet me there. What's to do now indeed? I guess there was something we missed somewhere where we didn't give the rosemary to our mama, so we missed a whole chunk of narrative because, well, I'm not about to replay this game. God helps those who help themselves. We asked the physician for advice. Try to see the priest for advice as well. We must try. Ask him if the holy men can recommend cures besides prayers and faith in God. Hurry, I hear your mother. Ooh, again, I'm sorry. Why did I click through all this dialogue? But yeah, we're going back to the priest now who wants some items. Because, you know, it's like an adventure game. But it's also an award-winning edutainment title. My God, what are the Danes doing? I'm sorry you're not Vikings anymore, but you can do better than this. Back to the school. You've got- I can translate your document. I have heard that a rag soaked in the blood of a flagellant may be a holy relic. I'll translate if you can get me one. And please, don't tell God that I believe in flagellant miracles. Well, that's just really weird for a priest to say that. Okay, so he doesn't believe in all knowing, all seeing God. Whatever, and I don't believe that this beer in front of my mouth is disappearing. Mm. Okay, so obviously I solved this puzzle. We go back. And about that translated document, uh, along the way we got a document. I forget how, but it doesn't matter. We have a document that explains what the cure for the plague is. And our French friend will tell us because, well, it's written in French. And it's really obvious if you're someone living in, you know, this century, watching this on YouTube. Good for you. I'm happy you've watched it up to this point. I've barely tolerated this game. Mm -hmm. Plague seems to thrive where people are crowded together. Jumping from person to person. I strongly recommend that everyone stays away from the diseased. Lock your doors or flee to the countryside. Don't talk to strangers and wait for God to cure it. So... Basically, this French physician tells you to run for it. Like the time out of the French tradition, we shall run for it. Okay, sorry, that was a bad French joke there. And a bad impression of French people. Basically, we go back to our daddy and tell him our knowledge, and then he wants us to figure out if our mama has plague or not. Spoiler alert, she doesn't. It's just like, I don't know, a sore throat. So we go meet our uncle out in the countryside, and oh boy, I think he's mentally disabled. My little nephew is here. Welcome to the pretty Tuscan hills. How are things in the city? Rotten, I suppose. Can Adolfo help? You're always welcome, you know. I hear the plague is doing ouch to Florence, but I get very little news. That's one way to describe a pandemic. It's doing ouch. Okay. <laughs> Right. Well, there's a thing we have to do here, and that's try to get back into the city because we left the city, so we have to try to go back into the city. Or whatever, it doesn't really matter because, ladies and gentlemen, everybody, we have a talking ass now. Hi there, Marty. Sometimes people do. That doesn't bother me, as long as the sun is shining. All right, enough sun for now. Let's... Oh yeah, and then the game kind of just crashes there. I own, I think, six computers in my household. And I tried it on, well, every single one of them. And yeah, the game crashes at this point. I don't know, maybe it's because I have an advanced operating system. You know, Windows 7, so high tech. Yeah. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier in the video, it's not a well-optimized game, and I'm not really shocked it crashes 
for a game released in 2000 and I think 10. It's probably designed for XP and Vista and all that. So, you know, that new fangled C++ of Windows 7 is just too much for this shitty ass game. Allow me to offer the ending for it. Everyone dies a plague because, well, what makes these people so special? Odds are because our little boy hero here has been running around the city and handling corpses. He infects his entire family, including his uncle, who would have been just perfectly fine living out in the countryside, but no. He let in his brother and his wife and his little son, and his son's a plague carrier because he also has some vermin that he brings with him who likely carries the fleas that were harboring the disease. So everyone dies, the end. Did you learn anything? If you don't remember well enough, you get a D in this class. What, it's an edutainment title. Let's not forget that. And it's also one of the worst games I've played in a long time. And also one of the funniest because, oh my god, who thought any of this was a good idea? Really? Are people in whatever Denmark is high as shit? I know it's close to Amsterdam, so I'm going with probably. But yeah, honestly, it's one of the funniest games I've played in the longest time. So yeah, that does it for this 40 ounces of adventure over Island Eliza adventure crossover and you know what ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between this same company they made a couple other games one about vikings and one about slavery guess which one i bought all right i'll see you next time ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between on i guess this is over analyzed adventures except i'm kind of drunk bye bye